Hello everyone, this is the second part dedicated to simulating an uh, Intel 4040 CPU. Uh, in the first part we discussed about uh, the characteristics of this CPU, so if you haven't watched it, then please pause and watch part one first. Uh, also, uh, the 4040 is rather similar to the 4004 with some additional features. So, again, if you haven't watched the 4004 uh, series of videos, uh, you should pause and watch those first. And uh, now let's take a look at uh, the implementation for the 4040 Java simulation. Uh, first, the different uh, pins available are combined uh, into a unified address space. This is similar to the 4004 uh, implementation. I am not going into much detail, but we have the 12-bit address and we have uh, ROM bank, uh, RAM bank and uh, uh, some mode that is uh, internally set uh, so that the CPU knows if it's uh, accessing uh, RAM or uh, ROM or whatever. So please have a look at uh, 4004 video where I explain this a bit more. Uh, but uh, in this mode it's also uh, possible to know if uh, uh, it's reading uh, data or uh, IO. So uh, instead of relying on uh, uh, interpreting the same uh, instruction multiple times, once by the CPU, once by the supporting IC, uh, in this case the simulated CPU will actually generate a unique address identifying clearly if it's program memory or uh, data memory or IO. Okay, so now let's take a look at the initialization routine. Uh, this is called uh, once the simulation starts or uh, when the simulation is reset. So uh, what it does, it's, uh, it sets various uh, internal uh, registers and flags and uh, one thing to note is that for the 4040 CPU has an interrupt enable flag uh, which is initially set to 1, allowing interrupts. Uh, the other flags are uh, set to 0. Uh, we also have uh, initially selected uh, this ROM mode which uh, internally specifies the CPU will start executing from uh, ROM memory, but of course this can be uh, program memory. Uh, also the CPU is attached uh, to a memory bus and to an uh, IO bus. So in this way the simulation uh, treats the CPU a bit more like a modern CPU with uh, this clear separation between uh, memory and uh, IO. But as I said, uh, we have a unified uh, address space for memory, for example. So it's not uh, necessary here to have uh, dedicated buses for different types of uh, memory. And of course, uh, the most important uh, method for the simulation is the step method. Uh, I did uh, previously some videos about uh, general uh, Java-based simulation and I explained there uh, that the step method is actually called at each simulation step for all the devices. So in this case uh, what the CPU does is uh, first checks if uh, there is a stop signal applied, in which case uh, it will uh, set the acknowledge signal and it will not execute. Uh, then it will check for an interrupt. Uh, if uh, there is uh, an interrupt signal, uh, the uh, CPU will uh, execute an appropriate uh, jump to handle the interrupt and of course this will happen only if this flag interrupt enable is set to 1. 
Uh, also, the CPU will check if uh, it's uh, halted. Uh, if uh, the CPU executed the halt instruction, then it will remain in this halt state, but can be uh, brought out of the halt state by executing an interrupt. Uh, so, uh, if uh, the CPU executes an interrupt. Uh, we also have this uh, internal flag servicing an interrupt. So if uh, the CPU is in the halt state, it, uh, it may uh, still execute something if uh, it is servicing an interrupt. Otherwise, uh, it will remain uh, in the halt state. Now, uh, the rest of this uh, simulation code is uh, rather similar to the 4004 implementation. So, the CPU will uh, read uh, the next instruction. This is separated into the two nibbles, the two four bit uh, parts of the instruction. If needed, if uh, we have a uh, two word opcode, it will also read uh, the next byte, which again will be separated in the two nibbles. And then uh, it will start executing uh, the instruction. So it will uh, have first a switch for the opcode. Uh, then uh, the second uh, nibble is checked. So, if the instruction is uh, zero, 0, in hexadecimal, so first nibble equals 0, second nibble equals 0, this is a uh, no nope or no operation, so it will simply do nothing. If uh, we have zero, 01, uh, this is a halt instruction, so it will simply set the flag uh, halt to 1 and do nothing else and so on so uh, you can uh, take a look at uh, any of the instructions uh, you can take a look in the data sheets in the opcode for example 0 5 yeah so we have first 0 then there is a 5 uh, this is an uh, or instruction so in this case it will uh, perform an OR of the accumulator with the specified register uh, and uh, so on. So for each of the instruction uh, it will uh, uh, execute some uh, code. And as you can see the actual code for a particular instruction is usually uh, quite uh, simple to follow. <coughs> Again let's see here um, increment okay and uh, this is basically the entire simulation of course uh, there are uh, a few lines of code uh, for each of the instructions uh, finally if uh, it's not able to find uh, an instruction so there is no case branch uh, then it will uh, throw uh, CPU invalid opcode exception uh, and uh, it's up to the simulation uh, to do something with uh, this exception so it's possible either to show it to the user or uh, continue the simulation as nothing happened uh, of course the simulation itself uh, also implements uh, some uh, methods that may be useful in uh, debugging the simulation uh, which allows uh, obtaining uh, the various internal variables uh, used for the simulation. I also uh, wrote a small uh, test where uh, it's possible to have a small program. Uh, there is possible to create a small uh, configuration. Uh, have this program uh, in the ROM, in the simulated ROM, of course. Uh, have the various uh, buses and uh, devices attached to the bus. Uh, create the CPU. Uh, and finally, uh, the CPU step uh, method is called 
uh, and uh, this would cause uh, the execution of uh, each instruction in this uh, program that I have here. And after each step, uh, the internal registers uh, are checked for uh, the expected value. And uh, if there is uh, something wrong, this uh, check method uh, will simply throw an exception. Uh, of course, it would be possible to use uh, more detailed uh, unit testing, but I chose this uh, method of implementation for simplicity. So, uh, I hope uh, this was useful to you. Uh, also, I have uh, a video about uh, simulating an uh, Intellect uh, Mod 40 system that uses the uh, simulation of the Intel 4040 CPU. So, please have a look at that. And uh, don't forget to leave comments. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.